Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jeffrey Way and I'll be your host for today's quick tip. We will be focusing on how to integrate NetTouch Prefixer into a build tool. This is something that has come up a lot and because it's not quite yet available for download, many people feel that you can't implement it into an ant build tool or a thing tool and that's not true. It's very possible. I'm going to show you how to do this with thing. If you're not familiar with thing, maybe you use Apache ant. It's very similar, almost a port of it, except that it's built on PHP. And what's nice about this is that you can then create extensions for it using your standard PHP knowledge and you don't have to learn anything like Java. So it's my build tool of choice for that reason. Okay, so let's get it set up and we'll build a base template just for the purposes of demonstrating how to work with Prefixer. If you'd like a full in-depth course on working with Thing, be sure to refer to our premium course. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to Sublime and we have a very simple project. We have an HTML file and a style sheet. So ideally what the goal is here is when we're done with our project, we're going to run a build command from the terminal. And among other things that we're not going to go over today, we want our style sheet to be filtered through prefixer.com so that it will update all of these CSS3 properties to their prefixedized version so we don't have to deal with that because it's a pain in the butt. All right, so the very first step is to create a build.xml file. Now remember though, this assumes that you have Fing installed. If you're not familiar with it, this may not be the lesson for you. However, if you'd like to get your hands dirty, you can go to the website and click download. And these are the commands that you need to run to get it set up on your system. It shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, so we need to create a build.xml file. We'll do that right now. Oftentimes you'll see this placed within its own build directory and you'll generally do that, but we're going to keep it as simple as possible for the time being and we'll place it within the root of our project. Next, this is only an XML file, so it should be really familiar to you. First, we need to declare it as XML and all thing projects need to be placed within a project wrapping element. So here we've given the project a name of demo because we're not going to have anything else here. We're only running it through Prefixer and we're going to set the default target to Prefixer. So we'll do that right now. And you can think of targets as simply functions. That's really all they are, functions to call. So the first thing we should do is echo out a message to let the reader of the terminal know what's going on. Okay, we can do that right now. And we'll use the echo element and the message will be updating your style sheet like so. Next, we need to load this style sheet into a property so that we can pass it to Prefixer. Now, if we go into the documentation, you'll find yourself referring to the documentation all the time. Let's go into the stable and what we want is a task called load file. And this is essentially file get contents in XML form. So you see here we pass a property. What is the returned result going to be stored in and then a file which is the file that we're going to load into that property so let's do that right now come back load file and the property will be css.min this is a common convention using a period it's a way to name space so that you don't have all of these global property names so anything related to css would be css dot next file is going to be CSS style.css. Now, in a real world build script, you would probably get this value dynamically, but we'll keep it simple for this example. Next, we want to run a shell script, and we can do that within Fing using the exec command. And you can see here, it's simply we're running a shell script. So here are our various attributes that you can refer to. But what I want here is we're going to run a command. And now we need to know how to work with the Prefixer API. If we go to prefixer.com, come down to API and command line, you can see that this is essentially what we need. So I'm gonna copy all of that and paste it in. And I will update this to single quotes so I don't screw up my layout. And now, rather than hard coding my style sheet in here, I'm going to reference this property right here. And I can do that by doing this format, like so. So now we're running a curl command. It's gonna fail silently, it's going to post, and it's going to send through a post attribute of CSS, and that's going to contain the contents of this style sheet. Then it's going to post to the Prefixer API. 
Now this looks good, but there's one problem. We're definitely querying the prefixer API. These properties will be updated, but then we're not telling Thing what to do with it. So it's going to disappear because it's not being stored in a file. So why don't we do this right here? We're going to overwrite the value of this file. So we have a couple options here. One, we could say you're going to take the result and you're going to store that within CSS style.css. But then this becomes very difficult to update as we discussed. So if we want to make things easier, why don't we create a property? If we come back to the thing API and let's search for the property task, this is essentially creating variables. So we're going to give it a name and that's how we reference it and a value. So we'll give this a name of css.path and we'll give it a value of css slash style.css. Now, more traditionally, you'll find this stored within a build.properties file, and that will also be contained within the directory that build.xml is stored in. That way, you don't have to edit this when you want to make updates to a new project, but it's okay in this case. So now, that's going to come back, and rather than hard coding this in, we will simply reference that, css.path, and we can do the same thing right here. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's try this out. I'm going to open up iTerm and you can see I am within my desktop. So I'm going to browse into our demo directory. And if I list the files, you'll see that we do have build.xml. So as long as we are within the directory where that file is stored, we can simply run the command think. And that will automatically run this target or function because we set the default target. If we did not do that, we would need to write thing and then the target name. So let's do that now, thing. And now we can see updating your style sheet and everything seemed to work correctly. So if we did it right, when I open this up again, this has now been updated. So in a real world situation, your build file would be much more in depth. You would create a published directory, but this will give you the base template to implement into your build scripts. For more tips and tutorials, always subscribe, follow us on Twitter, say hi on Facebook, or just come to the website at net.touchplus.com. My name's Jeffrey Way, and I'll see you later. Bye.